what really still today attracts me to Kubrick is the shelf life of his movies. It's insane. And because, you, you know, I mean, look, he died in 1999. People are still watching the movies and trying to figure out what he meant by, whether it's The Shining or Clockwork Orange or 2001. So he's, he's just ageless. It's just the body of work and the diversity of the body of work is what really attracted me. So um, before I met Leon, we, um, I was doing a documentary on Kubrick himself. And then I left Leon to last because I um, was really more interested in the opposite of life and picture, which was a great documentary. But I didn't want like famous directors and big stars to tell you what they thought of Kubrick. I wanted really to understand his creative process. So then I met Leon, we filmed together, and then I was really struck by his whole life. I had a different image of Leon when I met, before I met him. I thought I'm gonna meet this kind of healthy, robust guy who lives up in the hills doing well. And I really just found this gentle, tired, broken man that has been really run over by the Stanley Kubrick train, I call it. And, um, and just almost not appreciated, forgotten, you know? So we filmed together and then I went back to uh, my partner Elizabeth and I said, you know, this is like, what a story. This guy is like, he's like, he is like the Kubrick exhibit, you know, in his house. And he was like really like surrounded with boxes and um, film material and like props. And I was like, this guy is like, lives in a, he is his own exhibit. It's almost like after years of working for Kubrick, he, um, and I've noticed that with a lot of people that worked for him. Um, it's almost like you lose your own self. I volunteer to clean his whole house, um, put all his stuff, organize all his boxes, because I figured if he starts to open boxes, he'll remember. And, um, and it worked because he, he almost forgot what he did, how much he did. So as he was looking at um, all this film material and like, memos from Stanley screaming at him, going, you know, I need this, I need that. He started to really remember, and I think he was really surprised how much work he did. LA is funny, and, and I'm sure here too, Hollywood in a sense of like the, the industry. It's always people feel like either, like if you're not the celebrity, if you're not the director, if you're not the cinematographer, you you're really don't have much value to you. And so it's almost like you have to educate people and show people how much people put into each film. And I think Leon is like really a perfect example of people that just like are always, they're, they're not appreciated enough in the industry, you know? There's this whole perception that people think that um, that an assistant just brings coffee. In this case, it wasn't. It's almost like he's his own film school because he had to learn everything from the bottom up. I was just fascinated by like that he had, it's almost power power like he had an in with Kubrick um, that and then he says you know he doesn't regret any of it because he saw that he had this he had this broad access like he had he had really an amazing opportunity to to kind of work not to even kind of to work with one of the greatest filmmakers of that of the 20th century and you know who gets that but it comes with a cost you know, he's, he's sick, he, um, he, he has a hard time sleeping, he, um, he pushed himself. I think, I think Kubrick himself was abusive to himself. I think it's more of an addiction. I think they were both creative addicts. You, you, you can see how Kubrick's like towards the end even with eyes wide shut. He wouldn't even go to the doctor, he wouldn't even sleep. I mean, I talk to people that, uh, like the sound person, for on Eyes Wide Shut at Ties. He said that he would be three in the morning and he wants to listen to every sound take. And Ed Ties said to him, he was like, well, Stanley, you know, this, uh, you know, it's my job. I'll find the good takes and let you listen to them. He's like, no, why wouldn't I do this? this I love doing it. And so I think they, it's, Kubrick wasn't one of those that like, just like, you know, had his cigar and sat in a chair and says action. He was really involved with every little aspect. So I think if, people see it as he really was um, abusive to Leon, I think he was also abusive to himself. There is something about torturing yourself and then showing something that really works and people responding to it. 
It was something beautiful about it. I know so many people that have been doing it for so many years. They haven't even been paid. Or, I mean, people always go, oh, well, you, like, as a filmmaker, it's like, um, as far as, do you make money? I go, no, you don't make money. As a filmmaker, you spend money. And it's, that's the insanity of it, you know? But it's addictive.